Welcome to Content Inspire. I'm your host, Andrew Calvino. And today I have the legend and badass himself, Chase Webb. He is part of the Ghost fam on the Ghost Takeover team. I actually met him in Chicago during Bollywood weekends, which I was hype as hell. And I have a feeling when Chase shares his story, it's going to help you guys go after it. So introduce yourself to the listeners, my man. What's going on, guys? My name is Chase Webb. I'm from North Carolina. I just joined the Takeover team in uh, October of this year. It's been a long, long journey, long time coming, dude. I absolutely love Ghost, love everything about it. There's nothing I can say negative about it. Um, and super stoked to be here with you, Andrew, and get to talk about my story, man. Okay, sweet. And then um, the first question that I'm going to throw your way is, Chase, what is your why? Well, there's a quite a few things. Um, my why is just, I mean, there's a lot of things. First thing is I'm just always like dedicated to whatever I do. Like if there's something that I really, really enjoy, if there's something that I want to succeed at, like I'm going to give it hundred percent, no matter what, I pretty much give hundred percent to just about anything school, ghost, uh, my own brand, um, baseball for the past four years before now, grad school, pretty much anything. Um, I've always had a drive to basically like succeed in whatever I did. I know when I was younger, I was always like putting in extra work through just about anything, school, baseball, working out, like all types of things. So pretty much always been very self-driven, self-motivated, like always trying to be the best person that I could be. Mm -hmm. uh, glory to God through everything that I have had and been blessed with. Um, and that's pretty much my why is just wanting to compete and be the best at everything I can be and always give a hundred percent. And then not only that, like make sure that I, you know, give the best representation of myself through people that I'm connected with. So like my friends, you know, always want to make sure that like, I'm not being, I guess, like a bad image on them, my family, um, any brand I've worked with or anything like that. I always want to put like the best image out there and make sure, you know, I keep myself like a clean slate 24 seven. So. Okay. That's sick. Thank you for sharing that with me and the listeners, my man. And another quick question your way is, how did you get into the gym and working out? I know you said in regards to collegiate athlete, yep. um, is that what helped you get you into the gym and the fitness lifestyle? Honestly, a uh, little bit of that, a little bit of kind of always wanting to. Um, I, uh, when I was, I think it was when I was like 15, um, I actually like really started getting serious into it. Not, not as serious as I have been in like the past few years. I've actually learned a lot more in the past few years. When I was like 15, um, my parents found this coach about probably about 30 minutes away from me. He's a personal trainer. He's a great guy. Um, but he was kind of like the main starting point for me mm -hmm. as far as like lifting. And then I trained with him for about two years. And then after that two year period, I kind of switched into like basically just training by, on my own. And um, I trained with like a travel team that I played for in high school to get like recruited to go play college ball. And then once I got out of high school, I kind of took it seriously, kind of didn't. I was, I definitely like t wanted to go to the gym, but it definitely wasn't like a passion of mine. Um, it's kind of the same thing going into like my first two years of college, my first two years of um, junior college playing baseball. Like I liked the gym but it was like, I was only working out with our team. And then outside of that, like, I didn't really go. It was just kind of like, you know, go work out like you're three times a week and that's it. And then when I moved into my last two years of um, playing at a division two at Young Harris College, I uh, really kind of like started getting into it. I was like, you know, I really enjoy lifting. I really enjoy like basically the whole atmosphere of it. I had a few buddies that I was really good friends with that like always wanted to go, which really helped. Um, and so I actually started taking it like more serious. I would work out outside of our uh, team lift times. I would like, you know, I was really strict on my diet. I was really strict about stuff. And that's actually where I found Ghost was through that. So I uh, remember going in like my GNC back home and I walked in and it was just it was like Ghost hadn't been out, but I think for like two or three years. And uh, I remember walking in and like, that was like the first thing I saw when I walked in I was like, I hadn't really taken supplements before. Like I had taken, um, pre-workout like once or twice, but really wasn't into it. And, uh, I remember I went in and I got some protein 
and some BCAAs. And this was like when I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this seriously and started taking it, really enjoyed it. And after that, I was like, I really want to get involved with Ghost. I think that's like what I want to do. And I also want to, you know, get better in the gym, get bigger, look better. And so that's kind of where my drive has been for like probably the past three years. It's like the past three years have kind of set my point in the gym. So that's kind of where I've fell in love with it, I guess. Okay. That's cool, dude. On the real. And then um, what made you want to start your own clothing line and brand, Ballistic Gear? So there's a few things, actually. I uh, One of the biggest things was I've always liked the idea of basically being able to provide people with like something really, really cool that they would really enjoy. And I had mentioned it about three years ago to a roommate I had in college. We were like best friends. And I was talking to him about, I was like, dude, it'd be really cool if like we could, you know, start our own brand, like, you know, get our stuff out there, blah, 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 blah. And um, he was like, yeah, it'd be sick. And then we kind of just like, you know, dropped the situation because we didn't really know a whole lot about it. We were playing baseball. I was pretty busy. Um, and then last year around uh, September, October, I started like looking into some stuff a little bit more. I was like, you know, I was like looking in different companies like Alfleet, Everford, Anaka Power, Raw Gear, um, Young LA. I was looking at those companies and I was like, I wonder like how they are able to create such like a, not just like a great company, but like a culture. Mm -hmm. And so I started looking into some stuff, started watching some YouTube videos and I found some stuff talking about like how people can basically buy like top of the line merchandise and basically you can either get it made there or you can get it shipped here and then make it here and basically like create your own brand. So I was like, well, this is what I want to do. Like, I'm really interested in this. So I called my friend um, that I had been roommates with and I was like, Hey man, like, I've looked into some stuff. I really think this could be something really, really cool. Would you want to get involved? And at first he was like, yeah. And then he had some stuff come up on his plate and he wasn't able to. And so I just kind of went ahead and I was like, you know, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it now because, you know, I'm young, I have the ability to kind of, you know, just experiment, see what happens. And so I started and I did my, I did kind of, I didn't ever have like a website or anything, but my first like, stuff I made was like back in November, I sold most of it. Um, and then I talked to somebody I know that is a marketing major and we were talking about, you know, logos and stuff. And she was like, you know, I think you need to revamp some parts of your apparel company. I was like, well, what do you mean? She was like, I think you need to change the name. I think you need to like make the logo look a lot better. I think that will help you out tremendously. So I started looking into some stuff. I started looking into like different designs and like trying to figure out stuff. Cause my goal is like, I want to provide people with stuff that's really high quality, but not like overcharge them. Because like, even in the past five years with like mainstream companies, like Under Armour and stuff, like prices of like gear and like workout clothes and all that stuff have gone up so much, man. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's really hard to like, you know, you want to go on your favorite company's page whenever they make a new drop, but you can't spend but like so much money unless you're just going to blow like, you know, $400 on like five things. So I was trying to figure out a way to basically like get the same quality stuff, but make it a lot more appealing and affordable for people. And so that's like kind of what the whole backstory of my brand is. But anyways, I revamped my logo. Um, I had a guy on my team actually last year that has done like logo designs for people for like different Mm -hmm. companies. And so I sent him a few ideas and he sent me back some stuff and then he hit me with this one and I was like, dude, that is it. Like that looks perfect. That's exactly what I want. Um, And then I was talking with a few of my other friends and we were talking about, you know, dude, like what's a good name. And originally I had went with like ballistic performance apparel because I was like, Listed performance sounds good. And then obviously I'm going to slap apparel on the end of it. But I was like, you know, I feel like that's such a mouthful. Like we need to figure out a way to get something more, I guess, like slimmed down and more professional. So I went with ballistic gear. A lot of people liked it. They thought it sounded good. Um, 
So for the past like six months, I've been basically revamping the logo, revamping the brand name, finally got some stuff in order as far as like like getting some clothes ordered. Um, Mm -hmm. I actually hand make all my stuff other than like, I get the stuff shipped in as far as like the clothes, but all the logos, anything that's like on the stuff that's like my brand, I actually hand do it. It takes a lot of time. It sucks sometimes, Mm -hmm. but, uh, that's one thing that I like think is really cool is like everything I'm shipping out is handmade and it's going to somebody and like they're getting to enjoy it as much as like I've had fun, like having to go through the whole process. Um, but it's definitely been a grind, man. Like I'm definitely learning a lot of stuff that I didn't know. And I'm just really hoping like whenever I finally like first launch, I've had a lot of people that are expressed interest in it and they're like really excited about it. They like the clothes. I've given some people some stuff and, they tell me it's really high quality and they really, really like it. So I'm hoping whenever we first launch, like our first, uh, first launch of the year, I'm really excited. And I think it's going to be a good hit. So we'll see what happens, but I'm really excited okay. about it. Just let me know when uh launch details are solid and so that I can support. All right, dude. Awesome. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. No problem. And then, um, yeah, listeners, Chase dropped some gold because if you really want to do something, but you don't know what step one is, still just dive in, do what you need to do and just just build it, build it along the way and learn and do what you need to do. Because if you keep on waiting, 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 it's not going to fucking happen. So oh, yeah, 100 percent. That's I will say I, I know you're going to move on to another question. I will say that's like the one thing in the beginning that scared me was like anything you want to do, like you have to spend money. You have to, like, there's no way that you can't, that you can go into something and not spend money. And I think that's what frightens people a lot of times. It's like, they don't want to get so like, I guess like in debt with it. And then they feel like they can't get out of it. If it's something you really care about and it's something that's like, you really, really want to do. I mean, you have to, you have to go for it and you're going to have to spend some money. So that's what I would, I would say is like, don't be afraid to drop a little cash in the pot because it's going to have to happen. Unfortunately. Yep, exactly. So, and then moving on to the next question is, I see on your bio, what made you want to sign or partner up with He Would Love First? So actually there's a few different things. So I came across He Would Love First um, about two years ago. I had a buddy that was a fellow pitcher on our pitching staff and he had this bracelet and I've actually got one on right now, but um, I thought it was like really cool. I was like, yo man, like, where'd you get that bracelet at? He was like, Oh, it's this small, like Christian based company out of Georgia. It's called he would love first. I was like, all right. So I looked into it um, and started like buying some stuff. And originally I had, I think I had like partnered up with them as like a ambassador. They had like a, where you could like sign up and um, Mm -hmm. it was like a limited amount of people, but you could sign up and like get a code and you know basically like promote the brand like get stuff but it wasn't really like I guess like a partnership and then whenever I hit about I don't know like 1500 followers I got a DM from them asking asking if they would like me to partner with them and I was like dude this is awesome I've been wearing y'all's clothes for like three years two three years I was like yeah like no doubt and the other thing I like about it is every time that you buy something from them they send you a bracelet and they send you another bracelet. And the point of it is, it's like every time that you get a bracelet, they want you to go and like share and give somebody else ones to like basically spread the word of God. So I thought that was really cool. They do stuff a lot different. It's not just about selling clothes. It's more or less like, you know, spreading the word of God and Mm -hmm. having cool shirts to do it. So I I really enjoyed it. Um, I think they have a lot of good stuff behind them. It's a good community. A lot of people like want to work really, really hard with it. Um, I know there's a lot of people that are always promoting the brand and stuff like that. And it was like a dream of mine to be like partnered with a, such a good like Christian based company. So that's what, that's what really drove me. I was like, yeah, 100% I'm, I'm all in with the, with you guys. So. That's cool. I respect that a lot on the real. So, um, and then uh leading into the next question is i just want to say congrats on joining the ghost takeover team thank you man and and how did it feel when you found out dude i was i was stoked man because honestly i really did not think it was going to happen i uh i remember i went 
I talked to my, my mom, cause like me and my mom, she, we pretty much do everything together since I was like, I mean, she's always been there through baseball and stuff. My dad, he works like a lot and doesn't really have time sometimes to, uh, to go on trips and stuff. And, um, I remember me and my mom have always been really, really close. And so I told her this past summer, I was like, you know, I really want to go to Chicago. I was like, how, when we've never been, I was like, yeah, I really want to go to the, the headquarters. And so I talked with CJ a little bit and I was like, Hey man, like when, when would be a good time to come up and like visit? Because I know you got, you know, cause COVID everything. I was like, you know, I know you guys are like kind of like shut off from the public for a little bit. And he was like, well, if you want to come at like the end of July, early August, that'd probably be the best. So I, uh, I talked to my mom and she was like, yeah, you can go. She's like, but I want to go with you. I was like, all right. That's sick. So we uh, got some plane tickets and uh, we got up there. And Chicago is not at all what I thought it was going to be. Like a lot of people give Chicago like a really bad rap. And they like talk about like it's like a dirty city. It's not nice. And nope. like, it's like the total opposite. My mom, literally, I'm not lying to you. Ever since we've been that one time, she's she's went back. She's a real she's a real estate agent. She's actually the president of um, the association near my house. Mm -hmm. And so she went back up there about a month and a half ago for like the real estate, the national real estate convention. Mm -hmm. And uh, she loves it, man. Like she would she would love to go back up there like two three times a year if we could because she just thinks it's like awesome. Um, but anyways, we went. We went to the HQ. I kind of, kind of surprised him a little bit because when I came up, CJ wasn't there yet, so they were like, yeah. "Who the heck are you?" Mario. I actually I met Mario, and uh, he kind of showed me around, quick tour, and um, came outside. I was like, "Dude, this is this is awesome." And he was he was talking to me upstairs. He's like, "You know, I asked him about takeover, and I was like, hey, man, like, when do you think you guys are gonna be kind of diving back into that?'" And he was like, "Well." We're looking at around another month, month and a half. Um, not really sure yet, but we're thinking about adding some people. He was like, you know, obviously we can tell like you really love the brand. I was like, yeah. You know, I was like, you know, I came all the way from North Carolina. So I kind of, kind of like it a little bit. And then um, I just really enjoyed the experience. Like, even though it was so short, like it was just really cool. Cause they were very, very personable. Like it's not, yeah. I feel like if you roll up to any other companies headquarters like they're not gonna act like that it's it's just like the atmosphere of ghosts is just so much different than so many other companies like everybody is like dug in all about it like always wanting to promote always excited about everything that's launched and no matter what it is mm -hmm. it's just it's a lot different than you see like a lot of other brands like there's not as much connectivity to me as it has been like for instance like i remember like the first time me and you ever like had a conversation like there's not very many people that are involved with like a supplement company they're going to have conversations with people outside of like the little niche that they have and i've i don't think i've ever had a problem like anytime i've ever like talked to somebody that's an athlete or you know like talk to somebody on the takeover team like you guys are always like so personable and so whenever i got like asked to be a part i was like dude this is insane like i didn't think this was going to happen but when it happened i was like dude i'm so stoked because i get to finally like be a part of something like bigger than myself and like actually promote the brand and like get to like see people's faces whenever like you walk in and like, you know, you're there to hand them samples or you're there to like do a gym activation. Like people are like really interested in it. Cause like, there's not really any other brand out there that does the stuff that we do. So that's like the one thing that really excites me about it. Yep. Um, so yeah, guys, personal story. So I'm in Chicago walking to HQ and I'm waiting for Mario to come downstairs just so that we're able to meet up. And I, and I hear, yo, Andrew. And it was literally Chase and his mom there too. So, and, but yeah, so that was my first time meeting Chase. Um, it was sick just talking to him for a hot minute. Um, and then when we were at Bollywood, um, I was busy at the booth, but I saw you doing your thing, talking to all the athletes, talking to everyone. So I was like, watch, yeah. In a couple of months, he'll be on the takeover team for sure. And it was like, because it was like, out of, out of like the one time of the day, like out of all the people that are there, I was like, I walked outside and I was like, dude, that's freaking Andrew. I was like, 
definitely going to go say, like, what's up? Because I was like, there's no other way that, like, this would happen. Like, it was just, like, crazy. It's like right – like out of all the time of the day, like just happen to see you guys. So, and plus, you know, we had talked about whenever I was in Georgia, like I was going to come down and like, you know, come catch a workout with you, but our schedules never lined up or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then you, you obviously moved. Um, so and there's like, I feel like there's nobody left in Georgia anymore besides like Angel, unfortunately. So Angel, um, I believe that she's the only athlete ambassador that's out there. Yep. Um, but I believe that when the next person that's right, that's the right fit for the ghost takeover team or another athlete ambassador that's out in that area, that area will be more than taken care of for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then another quick question your way is what was your favorite part about Bollywood weekend, dude? Honestly, just like being able to connect with people because like I said before, like it's, this brand is like so much different than others. Like whenever I started talking to like Kayla and Angel um, and Kat and like a few other people, like they knew exactly who I was. Like it was, it, to me personally, it felt like I had known these people for like five plus years. Like we were just catching up. It wasn't like, you know, first time meeting somebody or anything like that. It was like cool, casual conversations. Like you just, it's not what you would expect out of people, especially when, you know, you've like been involved in like these people, you kind of like, I guess, look up to them in a way. Cause it's like, they're a part of something like you want to be a part of. And then mm -hmm. when you have the conversations with them, like, it's just so much different. Like I remember I met Ricky and Ricky like knew exactly who I was. He was like super chill, like really excited to talk. And like, we got to talk about a lot of different things. I remember Angel like knew exactly who I was. Kayla knew exactly who I was. Um, it was just really cool. Like, I think that was my favorite part about Bollywood was just being able to like connect with people. Well, so. yeah, let's, let's hope that next year you're able to come to Bollywood, whether you're working at the booth and, or you fly in personally. Yeah. Because, awesome. yeah that weekend was insane, bro. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, I, uh, I heard some stories. I remember I had, uh, I was talking to uh, Angel and Kayla and they're like, dude, yeah, we went out to like 2 AM. She was like, I don't usually, stay out till 2 a.m. She's like, I'm usually in bed like 10 30. She's like, I'm absolutely like running on like two hours of sleep, just absolutely yep. exhausted. Oh, like, so yeah, no joke. Um, the night before we had a private dinner at Tao, right? So everything yeah. was 100 percent closed off just for us. Then once we were done there, then we got escorted from the restaurant side to the club side and we just partied hard, dude. Like hard, like our own VIP section bottles on bottles and bottles it was insane bro Dude. at one point i looked at joe carter out from tennessee and i was just there like just get me to the hotel room like that's it just get me to the hotel room and and then once that alarm clock at 7 a.m went off i was like i need to work a booth at a music festival all day today all right let's do this yeah, yeah bro that was yeah, insane, but fun, but fun nonetheless. Um, <laughs> uh, now, another quick question your way is, what's your favorite supplement within a uh, ghost? Man, that is a really hard question to ask somebody. <laughs> uh, I think my favorite is... And this this has been this has been like a tie for a long time. I was like strawberry daiquiri, Max Tuning Pre, like yeah. all the way for like forever. But now I got, I'm looking at my wall back here that I got. Honestly, I think the sour or the sour pink lemonade Max Tuning Legend is like my all time favorite. Like even even that and the pump, like the, just the flavor is so good. Like I think that's like my all time. Like got to be the best that I've ever had personally. Okay, that's sick. So, if you had a chance to make your own flavor, what flavor would that be, and for what product? Oh my gosh! Uh, I think a really good flavor would be like either a lime mojito or like a blackberry lime mojito, and I would say Legend for sure because like that's that's my that's my favorite sub for sure, no doubt. Um, Okay. The reason, I, the reason I say that is like the lime, lime is like a very, 
you don't really see a lot of like there's a few stuff within ghost that's got like that lime flavor but there's not like a lot and there's not really a lot of companies out there that sell like a lime flavored thing it's usually like lemon lime and that's about it mm-hmm. i think like a mojito flavored drink would be like be pretty sick okay and then um another quick question your way is what's your favorite flavor of energy mm. released <laughs> that's funny um whether it's released or not you could we can talk about it because it's kind of public in regards to the flavor being orange yeah. cream so, yeah i'm gonna, but, I'm gonna have orange cream for sure like cream? It, i'm gonna okay. be honest with you it was citrus for a really really long time like mm-hmm. that was my that was my all-time favorite and then dude orange cream is just like another freaking level man like I didn't think it could get any better, honestly. Okay. It's, it's I, another one. I literally just got home from Chicago and boom, the case of orange cream was at my door and I was like, fuck yeah. So um, yeah, orange cream is stupid good, guys. It's like a really great flavor of like an orange soda with like a hint of like vanilla cream and it's just perfect. It's so good. But my favorite flavor from Energy, I would have to say between SPK Blue Raz and Citrus because Citrus is like I feel like it's a very like undermined flavor sometimes like a lot of people like have never had it because mm-hmm. like obviously you're gonna most people are gonna go for like the cool design can with like the anything like Sour Patch Kids mm-hmm. Citrus is like really slept on I feel like by a lot of people and dude when I used to work at the gym I would open up citrus before I would take a sip. I would pour some in a cup for my coworkers. I'm like, yo, you look tired as hell. Try this. And then <laughs> and they would take a sip and they're like, what is this? And I was like, citrus from Ghost, Ghost Energy. And they're like, that literally tastes like Sprite or Mountain Dew. That, that tastes like Sprite. It tastes like Mountain Dew. It's like so freaking close. Like that's insane. Yeah. And dude, I'm like, yep. Awesome. So, um, and then now onto the fun questions. What music do you listen to while working out? Usually any type of like, well, it's kind of weird. It, it's EDM, but it's very like specific EDM. It's not like, like I have a few different artists that I'm really into. Um, I have a little bit of some kind of upbeat EDM. Mm-hmm. And then I have some like kind of like metal rock edm that like kind of is like a little bit of screaming a little bit of like some i don't know it's kind of like a it's a it's a, it's a different mix it's actually i got hooked on it from um you ever heard of the game rocket league yeah so like if anybody out there has ever played rocket league the music on that game is like unbelievable like the soundtracks on that game there's like i think there's like 15 of them there's not a song on there that I don't like, but that's originally actually how I got started listening to EDM. And then as I like started listening to it, I kind of like looked into the artists a little bit more. I started finding some like different songs and that's like how I've made my whole playlist. I think I've got like 200 and some songs on like one playlist that I, and I, that's all I play at the gym. I listen to the same music every single time I go in there. <laughs> it never changes. Okay. And then um, what shows do you watch on Netflix, Disney Plus or Hulu on your downtime? I just finished Lost in Space. I kind of, uh, yeah. yeah, I just finished it. It was really good. It was w- different, but it was it was actually pretty good. Um, my all time favorites that I used to watch, uh, Peaky Blinders. If you ever get the chance to watch that, it's you have to get into the you have to get into it. You have to watch the first like episode and a half. Like you can't just like stop watching it after the first episode. But that's a really good show um the office i watched the office until they took it off netflix i cannot believe they took it off netflix that really Mm -hmm. made me mad um then i'm trying to think about what else oh the 100 the 100 is a really really good show okay that's sick and then um marvel versus dc marvel all day long okay and then um star wars versus harry potter harry potter for sure 
Sorry to all the people that like Star Wars. Wow. Really, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I have tried, and this is gonna sound terrible. I have watched maybe 15 minutes of a Star Wars movie in my entire life. Okay. And it's just like I don't know. I just I can't. I've tried to get into it. Like I've tried watching the originals because I was like, I'm not gonna watch any of the new stuff until I watch the originals. And I've tried to watch them, and I, I don't know. It's just not like it doesn't excite me very much. Like I like um. A lot of people are gonna hate me for saying this. I like Star Trek. Like I've watched like Star Trek. Yeah, I've watched all the movies and like they're all the TV show, uh, but the movies are uh, good. The main reason now that I understand and now I understand everything, bro. There's a lot of people that like Star Trek that don't like Star Wars, so that's fine. Yeah, you. I don't know. It's I wouldn't say that it's not that I don't like Star Wars. It's just like I couldn't get into the. I couldn't get into like the storyline. Like I tried. Especially because, like, it, if you watch Star Wars in the order you're – like, if you watch it in the order you that it came out versus, four, like, the five, order that you're supposed to. Four, yeah, four, five, six, one, two, three, and yeah. then seven, eight, nine, which eight and nine should, like, fucking burn. But <laughs> 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 I have not made those movies. It's just – I don't know. That's what, that's what, like, made me, like, weird about it. It's, like, why would you – why would you not – like, Star Trek, all the movies are, like, in order – Mm-hmm. And then like, Star Wars is like flips. You have to watch like them in a different order. So that's why, like, I guess it kind of like, I don't, I don't know. It's different, I guess. It's different. And then, um, what advice would you give to someone who's afraid to go after what they want? <sighs> Always look into the situation before you like go into it. Like, I, I don't want to be one of those people to say just go for it because sometimes really it can be one of those situations that you should not go for it. Like it can be like one of those situations where it's not very smart, but I would always say like, look, in, look into it first, make sure it's going to be a good idea. But if it is something that you know, right off hand, that's going to be a good idea. Like don't, don't hesitate because if you hesitate, like it's not going to, it's not going to help you at all. Like you're going to procrastinate it. And then like, it's eventually going to be gone, I guess would be one way of saying it. Like I've had so many decisions in my life that have been one of those things. Like, obviously I always think about what I'm going to do before I do it. Mm -hmm. But then I know that if I don't make that decision, that it's just not going to work out for me. Like I'll give you an example, for instance, like with me for baseball, like when I committed to go play my first two years. Like, obviously, I looked at my decision first, and I was like, okay, is this going to be right for me? And then as soon as I knew, as soon as I knew it felt right, I was like, I'm going to go for it. Like, no questions asked. Like, obviously, you're going to be a little bit scared at first. Everybody is. Everybody's nervous at first. They think that, like, oh, you know, I can't succeed at this or whatever. Like, I know I can do it. I just – I don't know if I'm going to be able to succeed at it. That's the thing. It's like so many people – like are so scared to fail that they won't even try. And I, and that's the thing. It's like, you can't, you can't be scared to fail. Like so many people do. I love, I love watching Max tuning stories because like, he's so real about his businesses. He's, he's really real. Like every single interaction that I've ever had with Max hanging out with him, all that he is real as hell. Exactly how you see on YouTube and social media. Yeah. yeah he's real. So it's like, you don't see, and I know this is like, this has to do with money, but you don't see people that have a successful business that like talk about the expenses that you have to spend on stuff. Like it really does. Like whenever you really start getting popular, like you do have to spend money. And it's not like, I, I remember I was watching one of his stories. He was like, he was talking about how, you know, he like traded in this car and he was like, you know, I don't, I don't need some expensive car. And that's the thing. I feel like everybody, bases like success off of like materialistic things versus like looking at somebody as like a person and like what they're actually doing because like you know anybody can anybody can go get like a a Lamborghini you know anybody can go get like a fancy sports car if you have like a little bit of money but like you know is that really what's defining like how successful you are so I would say another thing is to like don't be so observant of people's like materialistic things because that's not always a good representation of how things are so don't like try and compare yourself because that's like one thing that even we all do it as people but like don't try and compare yourself to somebody else because 
like for instance, in the gym, somebody's got better genetics than you always. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But like, if you're committed to what you're doing, like you're going to give it 110% no matter what. Somebody might have a step up on you, but you might have the opportunity to get a step up on them if you just give everything that you possibly can at that task. So, so I would say is don't hesitate. Make sure it's a smart decision, but don't hesitate. And then don't compare yourself to other people because everybody's in a different boat and everybody can succeed in different ways. So, okay. And then, um, so I know you're heavily involved, Instagram, um, social media, all that good fun stuff, right? But are you on YouTube? Are you any ideas of ever starting your own podcast one day for your brand, et cetera, et cetera? Like just asking. I have, I've thought about this stuff a lot, actually. Um, YouTube, I have really got to get into um, learning a lot of things before I get into it. Um, especially with like, thing is about like YouTube is, I mean, every, obviously everybody's like first beginning stuff, no matter what you do, like social media, um, YouTube, TikTok, whatever, like your first few things are not going to be like high quality. Cause obviously you're, you're going to have to learn. Like everybody has to learn from like a starting point. Um, but that's one thing about YouTube is right now for me, it's kind of a struggle because of school and stuff. Um, and like just getting the time. I'm also still like sometimes hesitant about like filming in front of people, but I, you know, I mean, I really shouldn't care because it, you know, people's opinions sometimes don't really, don't really matter. People's um, opinions doesn't matter at all yeah. whatsoever, but, um, but for me, as far as like in the future, yeah, I would love to start a YouTube channel. I think it would be awesome. I'd love to, I look up the ghost so much in YouTube because like Holden, his beginning like transitions, like everything he does in those YouTube videos to create them, like literally makes me want to start a YouTube channel. Every time I watch like a ghost YouTube clip, I'm like, dude, this is so sick. And you just like, you think about how much time like he spends on that stuff. Like, it's just insane. Like, I know, I, I remember he was talking about, like, how he can knock out a clip now in, like, less than a day. And then, like, when you first start, like, it takes you, like, almost a week to learn how to, like, do every little thing the right way. So, a lot of it is, like, coming from experience. It's just, like, me, I'm going to have to, like, you know, get started eventually and, like, learn a lot of things. But, um, yeah, that's – I would love to at some point. Podcast um, – it would be cool to do it whenever I like have the opportunity. I eventually want to like move my brand into a building, um, like have my own like place. Um, so I think whenever I get into that would be like probably my starting point for like a podcast or something like that. Like, um, I, I don't know if you know this guy, he's uh, he's a younger guy. He started the supplement company called V1, like just yeah. launched. Yeah. I'm familiar. I'm familiar because I know that he was killing it on TikTok and then he decided, yo, I'm going to start my own supplement brand and boom, that's it. So he was in his, I watched one of his TikToks the other day. So he was actually in his parents' basement for like, I think he's, I think he was there for like a year and he just bought his first like building mm -hmm. and he's got a podcast studio. So I think that would be probably like when I would decide to, okay. uh, yeah, so all right, guys. So Chase, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being on Content Inspire, for sharing your story, who you are as a person. I'm going to link everything of yours down in the bio below, just so that listeners, you know exactly where to find Chase. And Chase, is there anything that you'd like to say to the listeners before we hop off? No, I think I'm good. I think I've, I think I've uh, said just about everything, honestly. Okay, sweet. All right, guys. So thank you for tuning in. And till next time. Thanks, guys.